Closed captioning for The Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the taste, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on The Casey Malone Show. Today is highlights of American Made, the songwriter series. And I make potato crepes with Mudgy. But first, it's Easter Headquarters at Giano's Candy Company. Welcome to the Sweet Life. Giano's Candies have been a part of the fabric in the Mahoning Valley since 1910. It is a true family business with third generation brothers John, Greg, and Gus heading up the operations. Every filling, chocolate, egg, and bark is made in their factory in Struthers. Their reach is national thanks to appearances on the Home Shopping Network, but the work ethic, family atmosphere, and quality chocolate makes Giano's a locally owned gem. We are here with the Giannos brothers, and they are the owners of Giannos Candy. And we've got Greg, Gus, and John. Tell me a little bit about the family history. Since 1910, your grandfather started this business. Yeah, it really, it's really unbelievable. He came from Greece, he come over here, start making it, and then my dad brought it over at home, and then John, when he got out of school, he started up. And then when I got out of school, I went with John, and then when Gus got out, he joined us. So it's been a family affair ever since, you know. And now our kids are in it, and we're waiting for grandkids to come in. I mean, that that is such a great story. Okay. Now, the three of you working together, guys, <laughs> who's the hardest working, really, out of the three brothers? Well, who's here the longest is Greg. I have to admit that. He's here early in the morning getting things started, and he's the last one to leave here. And then, uh, while we all have certain jobs to do. He runs the operations, Greg runs the manufacturing, and I take care of like the outside sales and shipping. And uh, So but, you all have your talents. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. But when it goes back to when we were younger working in the basement of the home, we'd kill each other. <laughs> yeah. But now that, you know, he's somewhere and Greg's elsewhere and I'm elsewhere, we all get along fine now. John, the process starts, you've got to melt down the chocolate first. Right. We, we have a special blend of milk chocolate that we have from two different companies that we blend off. As you can see in the vat, this is a 6,000 pound vat that we probably empty once or twice a day. But our chocolate all comes in in 10 pound blocks. Okay. Then we pretty much uh, just, just chuck it in. <laughs> just, wow. Yeah, so we just keep adding them all day long. They come in 2,000 pound totes. And uh, we get a truckload about every week of chocolate. How many pounds of chocolate do you go through a year? Well, we go through about a million pounds of chocolate, but that relates to about a million point eight pounds of candy because by the time you add the centers and the nuts and the fruits and things like that, so. And then this is the recipe that you got from your grandfather? Yeah, except my grandfather used to make five pound batches, 10 pound batches. So he wasn't as flexible as far as telling the chocolate producers what to do with their recipes. What would your grandpa think if think he be, saw this now? I think he'd be pretty proud, and so would my dad. I think the greatest part would be that the three brothers, me, my brother Greg and Gus, have been working together since the day one. So you have the what, peanut butter, raspberry cream, you have the uh, coconut. Coconut. Do you make all your centers All our also? centers are made back in the kitchen there. Uh, the kitchen crew usually starts four or five hours earlier, so they'll make the centers, and when the girls come in, we start enrobing them. This is what we call our enrobing line. Start enrobing them with chocolate, so that whatever's made in the kitchen today will be finished and enrobed by the end of the day today in the warehouse, and some of it's shipped like before noon. Uh, so one day, I mean, it's that fresh. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. When we, uh, if we get an order in for 28 flavors today, we'll probably have eight of them made today and then eight tomorrow and eight the next day, and then in three days it'll go out, it'll be that fresh. What is your most popular candy that you sell? Uh, actually, peanut butter is right at the top, but our marshmallow is the most popular candy. We have to make marshmallows sometimes twice a week. And at Easter time, is that your most popular egg too? Uh, no, our, actually in the Easter time, our uh, maple walnut, fruit nut, and nut egg, and peanut butter egg are four most popular. They're pretty, pretty even. As you can see, the cellophane wrappers are all marked so you know what kind of chocolate you're getting. Absolutely. And when you box it, 
Right. You, you know exactly what you're getting. Well, this, I mean, is a really neat machine. Oh, yeah. We've been doing this. We, we're kind of the leader in the industry for marking chocolates and selling them individually. Uh, we sell them all over the country. As you can see, there's a lot of machinery here, but there's still a lot of handwork that you, you know yeah. that you can't replace. You still need the the people in there putting the touches on it, loading it, unloading it. Um, we'd rather do it that way. We we could do uh, this machine will do 200 pieces a minute. What is your biggest account? Because you're really more of a wholesaler now than an actually a yeah, retail Yeah, we have uh, three big distributors. There's Troyer Foods. It's down in this Dutch Valley up in York, Pennsylvania. They go to. They each go to 30 states themselves with about, you know, they, I think they have a fleets of oh, 60 or 70 semis, and pretty much all of those have our chocolates on them. There's a truckload goes here out of here every day to one of those distributors. So it's true that you are one of the largest UPS clients in the Mahoning Valley. Probably, yeah, with the home shopping network. We've been known to put 5,000 packages a day out. Tell me how you got hooked up with the um, home shopping network, because I mean, that is just... Well, the candy industry is a tight industry. If you're in a business and you know anybody, I could walk in any candy store in anywhere in the country, and they're gonna grab me and take me right through their plant. And a lot of our, our friends out there, when they the home shopping after was looking, they steered them our way because what we were doing is what they were looking for. And uh, even like some of our competitors in town, like Daffins, they're our friends. They're they're competitor, but we don't compete against each other. Yeah. They kind of they pretty much steered our way because this is what our niche is. We I classify ourselves as we're we're small enough to take on a job that the big company won't. If you needed a million pieces, big company doesn't want to hear. That's not even worth them starting their lines. But then a the little guy, he can't do it. So, the, so we're right in the middle. middle, yeah. middle we're, the, we're the biggest little company around. <laughs> That's a good slogan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's just, it's just from a little boy starting, you know, in the cellar and coming out like this, it, it's been great. You know, and the thing is, like I said, everybody got their own job. We all know what we got to do. And if there's a problem, we all just sit down and... We got family, all family. Yeah. We got his daughter, my sons, his son, we got cousins. <laughs> It's amazing. We all get along. It's good. We we all work hard, and we. Yep. Biggest thing we eat good at lunch. That's for sure. <laughs> you do we eat good at lunch? Yeah. And I know I see you down at St. John's. Uh -huh. So yeah, I know. We eat all the time. People, and, people always say, "You guys getting together for uh, Christmas dinner?" I said, "We don't want to see each other on Christmas. <laughs> we see each other every day." <laughs> The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. I've got your next t-shirt idea for the magic trick. Eat, drink, celebrate, repeat. Casey, like that? that is our slogan. Okay, like, but this is for you know what? I think we need to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> but yes, you know, when it comes to our food, we truly have the passion for bringing great quality food. We make from scratch, we support local farmers with our farm to table menu, and that's what we do. And then when it comes to um, our beverages, our oh. drinks, I mean, we have 41 craft beers on tap. We really have the passion for the craft beer, and we are the only place this side of the state that does wine on tap. You cannot get a better quality. And then celebrate here at Magic Tree. You know, it's all about creating a memory for people. And the, you, you see all the different celebrations, all the things that people just love to party here. And I'll tell you, eat, drink, celebrate, repeat. Cheers. Part of growing up in Youngstown is growing up with Rolly Brothers Markets. Even friends who have moved out of town come to shop and say hi when they're home for a visit. And my family has always shopped at Rolly's and today they are still my favorite grocery store. My recipes depend on the best ingredients and that's why I get them at Rolly's, where you'll always find the freshest food at the best prices. Rolly Brothers is a proud sponsor of the KC Malone Show. The quality that customers have come to expect is true local flavor. Five Buck Burger Mondays at Sadie's Place, inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town.
My dad, Stephen J. Kamara, opened a jewelry store in 1948. He sold high quality jewelry at a fair price. We are keeping the family tradition alive. I'm Bob Kamara, along with my children, Rob and Brianna. Kamara's has the largest selection of diamonds and engagement rings in our area. You can trust Kamara Jewelers to offer the best value and personal service. Kamara Jewelers, locally owned by the third generation Kamara family and working on the fourth. Get real, get Kamara. Today I am joined by a guest cook. This is Mary Yurko, but you're better known as Mudgy. That's her nickname. So I'm gonna call you Mudgy, is that okay? Right, okay, look me. All right, so Mudgy, I uh, ran into her at Kamara Jewelers last week and we were talking recipes and she told me about her potato crepes. And instead of like a pierogi dough, you use a light crepe to wrap mashed potatoes with butter and boy, I tried one and they are super light, super delicious, and really pretty easy to make. You just have to get all the ingredients prepared. A little time consuming, but easy. I'm Step telling you. at a time. Well worth all the steps and really basic ingredients and yes. nothing that you don't already have in your fridge or pantry. You want to boss me around and we'll get this uh, sure. the crepe going? Okay, you start with your eggs. All right. You have three. Three eggs, two tablespoons of melted butter. All righty, there we go. A cup and a half of milk. Oh, the milk, so it's all the wet ingredients first. Yes, it seems like a lot of milk, but it is not. That's correct, that it's a cup and a half. Okay, and I'll move that over there. And a cup and a fourth of flour. Okay, just regular, all-purpose yes. flour. And mix that well with the mixer. All right, so this is about the right consistency. It's nice and runny. Right. You don't want a thick one. And now that you have that done, it's going to sit for one hour. Okay, and, and, and what does that do? It kind of rests it? Yeah. All right, so even though it's a non-stick pan, and that's about five inches, look at how cute this little pan is. You Each time you brush it with a little Crisco. Yes, just a little teaser. And then that is about an eighth of a cup right. of the batter, right in the middle. And the secret is? In the wrist. You just roll it over. And, and this is over low heat. You only cook it on the bottom side because the top side we take care of when we fry it in the butter. Does that look done? A little bit more. You could tell when the edges start to whiten. Okay. And it looks like it's bubbling underneath. And they almost pull away a little bit from the pan, don't they? Exactly. Perfect. Well, that batch made between 18 and 20 crepes. Right. Okay, so you saw that we flipped them right out. So this is the cooked side that is up. And the side that was up in the pan will now be down. Right. Does that make sense? And then this, I made you a little ball of okay. mashed potatoes. Is that big enough? Yes. You take the mashed potatoes and you take the sides up, the long sides up first. Okay. And you bring them together and you fold it over. Just like a nice little package. And then you roll it to the top. After frying these to a nice golden brown, you could transfer them to a buttered baking dish and just warm them further for about 30 minutes, just to keep them warm right before you serve them. Right, Mudge? Yes. Okay, so I'm giving right instructions here. Now, Monty, you're half Slovak, Polish. What do you think of, uh, I, I want you to try I, Mudge's crepes. As they were coming out of the uh, frying pan. And what do you think? I think they're wonderful. They're My so light. My grandmother made something like this, but she would put like jelly in. 
Oh, or, yeah. You know. Or cottage cheese. Co that's right, cottage, cottage cheese. cheese. She would buy the dry cottage cheese and add things to it. Yeah. 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 I mean, these are so it was light. a Friday staple. Uh, and so delicious. They remind me of my grandma's. They're delicious. And uh, you like to serve these with beef or, or, or pork mm -hmm. dish. But honestly, this could mm -hmm. be the whole meal. Maybe some green beans. Mm-hmm. They are, what do you think? I love them. I love them much. They These are, are amazing. So light. They are so good. I'm surprised they're not floating off our plate. <laughs> they are very tasty. Yeah. And look at what she brought for dessert. This beautiful, now what do you call this? Strawberry cheesecake. And we. No bake. Got a promise from her that you will come back and show us how to make this. You're twisting my arm. Next time you're coming back, you're moving in. I think we have Mudge move upstairs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> She can uh, do all our cooking for us. This is amazing. So go to my website, CaseyMaloneShow.com. We're gonna have all the ingredients, the quantities, and how to prepare this. And you're gonna love Mudge's potato crepes. These are amazing. It was so, such a pleasure to have you in the oh, kitchen. Oh, same Here's here. Here's Thank you. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Right now, you can step up to the brand new Radius, the next great zero turn rider from Xmark. Now available for as little as $49.99, with attractive financing offers too. With Xmark, you'll get a great looking professional quality cuts in less time, every time. From the mowers, landscape pros trust two to one over the next best selling brand. Xmark, ready to work for you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. You know, every personal injury case has its own unique circumstances. The best advice I can give to anybody who suffered an injury is please, call a lawyer. Don't try to settle the case on your own. When you contact our office, you will talk to a lawyer. And we're not gonna charge you for just walking in our door or giving us a call. In fact, we won't get a fee unless your case is successful. Personal attention is what our clients deserve. It's our number one priority. Hi everybody, I'm Danny, owner and operator of Cthulhu Prime Meats, the third generation butcher shop that not only specializes in quality, but also in customer service and doing things in a new technological way. Chris here is our customer service manager. Chris, what do you think that we do differently than any other grocery store? I think we personally not only offer great product, but we can offer a great customer service experience as well. We try and treat all our customers like they were family and friends, ask how their family's doing just so they can keep in touch, and give them that customer experience that they deserve. And the nice part is we not only do that inside the store, but also on CthulhuPrimeats.com, where you can buy a lot of our products that we carry here, whether it be grass-fed beef, organic chicken, some of our specialty burgers and bacon, those are wonderful, and we're going to provide that same customer experience online as we do in store. Come see us in store or online. Make your next meal one to remember. Four for five till six. Happy hour at Sadie's Place inside the Best Western, Route 46, Austin Town. My mom was always in my corner, always pushing me to do better. I couldn't have asked for a better mother. So when she needed assisted living, I did my research. Doctors, nurses, and others with family and assisted living, they all said, trust the name you know. Briarfield. For assisted living with top health care experts, a caring staff, and a comfortable home-like setting, trust the name you know. Briarfield. Trust the name you know. Briarfield. Proudly serving the Valley for over 20 years. Bob DiPiro is one of the top songwriters in Nashville with numerous number one and top 20 songs. He writes for the likes of the Oak Ridge Boys, Reba, George Strait, Vince Gill, anyone who needs a great song. For the past few years, he has brought fellow songwriters to town to benefit Compass Family Services. You've been doing this for a few years. Why, you know, why do you like Compass and the, you know, the services they provide? You know, this year, they're designating funds for the Sojourner House. Well, um, when my friend Tim Thomas approached me to do this for Compass, uh, I, of course, didn't have any background in Compass, so I just started looking into it. Tim started educating me about it, and it was just a, what a wonderful, miraculous thing to, to help people who, who haven't had any help, who need help. 
who desperately want it. And Compass supplies that, and she, they supply, they supply the love, the, 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 the everything someone needs, the security. Uh, so it just reached out to me, you know. And and being from Youngstown, uh, I've been so blessed in my career, and of course it all started here. So it was my chance to come up here and, and give back. So we started these songwriter shows. Al Anderson is a legend, you know, going back to the oh rock and roll days of NRDC. He wrote for the Allman Brothers. He wrote for the Allman uh. Brothers, hundred, <laughs> one of the hundred greatest living guitarists, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But we have been writing for 20 plus years together. Dear friend, uh, Leslie Satcher is just a oh, monstrous a talent from Texas, a real Texan, and she's a great storyteller. And the, the sweetness is, I started writing with Ian Keggy and uh, just developed a great friendship with him. And oh, by the way, he happens to be Phil Keggy's son. Well, you know. So I just had to say, come on, man, you got to come up here. Well, he has big shoes to fill and he's doing a really good job with that. Ian is doing a great job and he's creating his own path. Yes. And he's walking his own walk. And uh, as you'll see, as folks, Hopefully at this show we'll see he's so supremely talented. Why Nashville? I mean, that, that would have seemed to be your sensibility, country music. You know, it, it was a God thing. You know, I always say I moved to Nashville because I knew my car wouldn't make it to LA. But it was really, uh, you know, I had made trips to New York and I just couldn't picture myself living in this New York City. And Who are those, who do you follow from, from the, the classics, you know, the early guys? Well, you know, like I said, I, I had zero background. Zero knowledge. Zero background in country music. I knew Johnny Cash because Johnny Cash was on pop radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew Tammy Wynette because she was on pop radio, uh, but j those iconic artists I knew, but I, I never followed them down into where they started and yeah. what their original stuff was. It was only when I moved to Nashville and I started actually digging into what is country music and where did it come from that I started following Johnny Cash's lineage. In honor of Bob's return, we had to get together, you know, get the band back together. Get the band back together. Joy. Oh, such good times, the 70s, you know. You know, they say- Rob Desimone and his brother Don were also members of the band. Now, I do yourselves. Who is who? Uh, the best looking guy is Bob. <laughs> And the second best looking guy is Bob. <laughs> okay, who, <laughs> who, who has the fro? Ralph Me. That's, That's Ralph you. Ralph, <laughs> Ralph Me. Fro. fro. Okay, did they call you Fro? No. no they should have, no. man. That should have been your nickname. They called me Hey You. And then you down. And I really like all your facial hair. Oh, we had it and going on. Is this you? No, that's Ralph Vitello, who's passed away. Okay. This is Don, the rock star. Dawn. Yeah, very Bob Seeger there. You're, you're channeling some Seeger there. Seeger and then on. you yeah, had quite a head of hair on you. So <laughs> we, we come directly from Garage. We're the original Garage band. And, and we went through, that band went through several changes. And then you know how bands are. You break up, get back together again, break up, get back together again. And <laughs> it ended up with Dawn and Ralph and me and another Ralph, Ralph Vitello who's since passed away and we were a band and then a lead singer found us and he said I've been trying to get a record deal but they don't want one guy they want a group so you want a record deal <laughs> let's see if we can make a record deal so we went to somebody's basement and recorded a demo here in Youngstown and the Joy Band was Joy was was born so this was your first album we got our Your only, only album. album. That was our first and only album. <laughs> that, that makes it uh, very How valuable rare. is this? 
If I went to oh, eBay, could I find this? Of I think <laughs> Tens of dollars. <laughs> was it about like was it as much fun as you thought it was going to be? You saw the Beatles, you saw it the screen. Was a lot of band. fun. We had was a bunch fun? of fun. Are, are, are our wives going to see this? <laughs> no. no. Well, you weren't <laughs> married when you were in the band, weren't you guys? Right out of high school or yeah, something? Yeah. I was going steady with Diane. Yeah. Oh so, yes, and you yeah, played yeah. a lot of Don seminaries. Right. He was, Don, he he was, was the priest. He was <laughs> father to priest. Care. The rest of us were sinners. <laughs> You know, rock and roll has kind of become a passe thing, but I still get my shot of classic rock when yeah. I can. You know, I still listen to the old, the old rockers. You know, and I'll listen to jazz, I'll listen to folk, I'll listen to anything, because I believe that none of the Duke Ellington School of Music that there's two kinds of music: good music and bad music, and you can find both of those in any genre you go into. So I'm always looking for the good stuff. This year, American Made will feature Bob DePiro, Kix Brooks, and Rivers Rutherford. The show is April 28th, and tickets are available at youngstownsymphony.com. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.